Animal extinction is something that's been going on almost as long as there have been animals. It can happen as a result of a major natural catastrophe, like a meteorite impact, or simply because some other animal finds them irresistibly tasty. But more than ever before, we're becoming aware of the impacts that our own activities are having on animal species. The dodo, for instance, was lost forever just 70 years after its discovery in 1598, probably after ship rats that came with the pioneers spread across their native Mauritius, eating dodo eggs and out-competing them for food. And more recently, in 1936, we lamented the death of the last Tasmanian tiger in captivity after they were hunted and out-competed and squeezed out of their habitat in the wild. So while extinction might be a natural part of ecological evolution, it's become clear that invasive, disruptive humans aren't helping the situation. Enter, therefore, the IUCN's Red List. In 1964, the International Union for Conservation of Nature devised a way of classifying the threat level to certain species based on the information we have about their population and distribution. The idea of an animal being vulnerable, endangered or critically endangered stems from this list, along with an international awareness of the dangers that some species are in. To date, over 76,000 animals have been assessed, with more than 22,000 found to be at some risk of extinction. Those are some scary numbers, but it's not all bad news. The IUCN's Red List has been pivotal in focusing our efforts on saving species most at risk before they go the way of the dodo. And now, some 52 years after its inception, conservationists' efforts are beginning to bear fruit. Chevalsky's horse is considered the only true wild horse, with its short, upright mane which grows and sheds each year. Documented in cave paintings over 20,000 years old, it was native to Central Asia. Interbreeding with domestic horses led to its decline, and by the end of the 1960s, they had completely disappeared from Mongolia. Only a few remained in captivity. Those specimens that still remained were cared for and carefully bred and released back into the wild over a period of nearly 40 years. And today, there's a healthy population of more than 2,000 individuals, most of them in their native Mongolia, plus a naturally reproducing herd within the unmanaged wildlife refuge within the Chernobyl exclusion zone in Ukraine. These horses have really been brought back from the brink, and the IUCN have been delighted to raise their classification from extinct in the wild to merely endangered. Also in Asia, the literal poster child of animal protection and conservation by the World Wildlife Fund for Nature is the giant panda. These herbivores can weigh up to 150 kilos, and yet 99% of their diet is just bamboo. A lot of bamboo. They can eat 38 kilos of it a day just to meet their energy needs. Their population has been in decline as a result of their habitat being squeezed by advancing agriculture and urban development. And it doesn't help that they've got a pretty ponderous approach to mating. So when the remaining population was broken up, they face a continual decline without intervention. In 1980, there were less than 1,000 pandas left. They were classified as endangered by the IUCN, but strict conservation measures seem to have turned the tide. Now, there's a 20-year prison sentence for killing one of these gentle beasts, while the protected forest areas they live in have been expanded to cover more than 1,400 square kilometres. Today, there are more than 1,850 individuals in the wild, in 35 separate populations, which represents a rise of more than 16% over the last 10 years. They're not out of the woods yet, though. Giant pandas are still vulnerable, but with continuing care and conservation, we can expect their numbers to keep growing, just as soon as they get around to mating instead of eating. But it's not always such an easy ride, and all too often, conservation efforts are in conflict with continuing human expansion and exploitation. Rhinos have been another recipient of massive conservation publicity, and many of their populations have also been brought back from the brink. Southern white rhinos are arguably one of conservation's greatest success stories. 
In the late 19th century, they were thought to have gone extinct, hunted for their horns. But in 1895, a small group of 100 individuals were discovered in South Africa. A century of protection later, and there are now more than 20,000 southern white rhinos in protected areas across South Africa, Namibia, Zimbabwe and Kenya. With a 200-fold increase in population, they're now classed as near-threatened and are the only species of rhino that are no longer endangered. But sadly, that's not the case for their cousins, the northern white rhinos. This subspecies has been reduced to just three individuals by intense poaching for their horn, habitat loss, and many a failed attempt to breed. The last hope for this species is no longer conservation, but medical science, as researchers race to develop IVF techniques that could only keep their lineage alive. But only time will tell if they succeed. On the whole though, many conservation efforts are succeeding, giving species that are clinging onto their existence a new lease of life. What animal would you like to see roaming the wilds again? Let me know in the comments below and give us a like and subscribe for more science and nature videos. Bye for now.